I'm muted because we're ordering Starbucks right now. Just give me a second. Oh, okay. No worries. And I'll have a um, grande yeah. mocha frappa crappa nana mana be plu. Grande caramel creme brulee. With I love sprinkles because I'm feeling Can't naughty. The American Starbucks options are amazing. Have you ever yeah. done a Transformer, Troy? Have you ever done a tra- I have. Have voice Transformer? I've done two. Transformer well, I've done, choice? yeah, I've done two. Done a Transformer done... sounds very... Uh... In like Fall of Cybertron? Or Actually, like three. I did three. I did Jazz, which probably shouldn't have happened. <laughs> yeah, I was going to Bold, okay. It's opening strong. <laughs> but here's how it happened. What I even is down that? down the hall. Huh? What even is that? That escaped my jazz. radar. Jazz, Jazz is a, a transformer who is traditionally voiced uh, by African American actors. Um, it, it originated it, by Scatman Carruthers. Yeah. yeah. So, so there have not been anybody. I'm not a big anybody... Transformers nerd, clearly. <gasps> oh man, my first Transformer was a G1 Jetfire. Oh, okay. And so I was down the hall recording on something else, and they said, "Can you do Scatman Carruthers?" And I was like. I need more context. <laughs> Should for, I? <laughs> for what you mean. And so just kind of on it, I was like, sure. And what I really was doing, if anybody knows, was Bubs from Homestar Runner. Mm. And and so they went, great. I was like, what just happened? Like, you just got a gig. Don't worry about it. We'll do it later. And I came in and they told me I was doing Jetfire. I was like, oh my gosh, I get to do Jetfire. I was like, yeah, you remember that audition you did? I was like, no. And they're like, you remember we? I came into the room and you just did a little bit of jazz. I was like, yeah. I was like, you're playing jazz. I'm like, oh, I don't know if we should be doing this or not. <laughs> and we did it twice. But I also got to do Jetfire, which was mm. which was just so it was kind of like a a good payoff, mm. whatever. But then that studio folded, uh, and the game was not good. Um, it was not. But and and then I got to do it for an actual proper show, and I got to be like the baddie. It was oh, cool. awesome. So very cool. Yeah, Troy. I don't think I've ever asked before. Have you ever yes. had like a dream role, like a dream character that you've always wanted to play? Everyone I ever get. Oh, um, yeah. I Kai mean, Lang obviously then fits that list. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never let it go. God. I mean, if you feed me, if you feed me a setup that effectively, yeah, of everyone like, I get here's some soft pitch. Ready? Yeah, exactly. Austin, eyes on the ball. Here we go. I am not above the soft there pitch. There it is. Um. So yeah, yeah. I got to. I got to do. I mean, Batman was my first graphic novel I ever got, and I got to do mm-hmm. that. And then I got to be the Joker, which was really the kind of the role that that made me go. I want to do this but I never thought that I would do Joker I just I just thought that I, I wanted to do that and I felt it was very I may have said this to you guys before um, by the way it's not 9 o'clock in the morning <laughs> I was going to say I love wine for audio Watch listeners listen. I'm That's learning amazing. normally we all have cups of coffee uh, Alana Pierce is getting her cup of coffee in transit yeah. Austin Wintry, of course, has his, but that doesn't matter because you it could be six o'clock at night and you're having a cup of coffee. Oh, I had one. Uh, I do that too. Uh, I had I had Evidently. a uh, espresso. Uh, like when we when we recorded last time, I think it was ten mm. o'clock for us, and I made one for the show. And uh, mm. so yeah, I was. I can't relate at all to that. I can't relate at all. Yeah, to that. I can exactly. Make my coffee I so. know, but Mike Never Bethel, happens. you know, you yeah. know the day he's had by his beverage. So that's true. That's true. Uh, this, this is, this is kind Mike, of the. You never have tea. As a Brit, you never I, have tea. I'm often drinking tea on the show. It's always assumed because of your American. You just bias, don't tell us. Yeah. It's coffee. Sometimes oh, just you know to fit coffee. in better with the crowd. You know you're. You're with Americans. You don't want to have to explain wow. what tea is again. It's, you know, sometimes you just go with it. You go with the flow. You don't want to defend your dirt water and get it. Exactly, it's yeah. It's a lot of tea. Yeah. Doubt yeah, water. It's a, it's, a, it's a beverage dirt. with absolutely no bad history as well, which is great. Which Wasn't is doubt tea, water so. like a, a working title for that Robin Williams movie? And they were like, it doesn't have the same kind of punch to it. And like doubt earth, doubt, doubt wind, fifth element. doubt fire. <laughs> <laughs> doubt <laughs> doubt <laughs> Jovovich. <laughs> Um, you went so yeah, three anyway. steps of uh, of process there, Austin. I was there for you. Like that? Like you like that? For you audio traveled. listeners, you traveled and I respected it. Someone, yeah. someone, hopefully will appreciate that. I, I, yeah, no, they'll like it. They'll like that. I'll, I'll play well in the comments as long as none of us mention NFTs. We'll be fine. 
Um, <laughs> did anybody watch the South Park special? COVID, COVID special. I still no, haven't. Despite Part your two. protestation, I. Oh I, my god! I How know. did you not? There was nothing else for you to do. I, you know, that's the thing. That's that's the that's the <laughs> you thing had that's so else to do. <laughs> By the way, Pine? I like Troy with wine. I just like to put. I just like to make very clear. I'm I'm a fan of wine, Troy. I think that's a that's a that's a good <gasps> new thing for the show. Mike, can we please go whining? Oh. Uh, is that what this show is? I feel is like I feel like we week? whine every week, Troy. I feel like we whine every week. W H I N E. Hey, how about when we go to Vegas? Then, then uh, there's there's a one there's a couple places, but there's there's one place. Oh, you want to sure. go to the place with the wall with the like? Yes. It's always like an elevator. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yes. Gonna, Let's do that. Gonna, Are you into wine, that. Alana? Is it your thing? I'm sorry. What? Yeah, I like wine. I, okay. I but I, I have a, a lot of trouble drinking red because it gives me a headache. So, oh, do you to drink wine. Californias? This is gonna be sure. guys. You What's probably should just tune out. I heard that Press, too. Like double tap on the right side of the screen for YouTube and 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 fast forward a, a couple of times. And then audio listeners, this is probably where an ad's gonna come in. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Alana, what, do you drink California Reds? I couldn't even tell you. I've been so scared off of red that I don't really drink it at all. All right. If you go old world, if you do like some some French or Italian, easy peasy. Old world. Noted. Hold on, wines. It's this like is the, as opposed no, to no, California no, or Oregon. Oregon. In in Europe, we call those wines, and we don't really have a word for the Californian ones. Um. <laughs> I have a question. Dis- dissident wines. <laughs> I have a video game question. I haven't Great. been here. Can I give context first? Tell everyone yes. welcome to play Watch This and I will on a PS9. I'm in a car. Shit. Because. Um, I'm currently in Colorado because uh, I wanted to spend like a couple of days in the woods doing hikes in Boulder. So I'm driving to Boulder. Was hoping to be there, but flight got delayed. So I'm not. Um, that's Austin Wintry. <laughs> None of the big pointing works when we do it this way. He's a video game post. That's Mike Dudley. He's a video game director. That's for making. He's a video game actor. Look at us go. What's the question? And wine expert. Not really. But wine, and expert. wine expert. Well, I buy it on the show. Expert. Yeah. I know, I know a little bit. I've, I've, I've like educated myself a little bit. Um, I know like one region, and that's that's about it. I know enough. What was the video game question? So I, I, I started and I never finished. So I just finished Ori in the Blind Forest. Mm. On my Switch, did mm. it on my Switch? That definitive yeah. edition got that plat. Nice. Feeling good about it. Uh, it's been, I mean, there's, there's very few games that I will 100% completionist, you know, get, get all of it. But it was like, what, what's the, I can't remember now what it says. Uh, I took a picture of it, but it's like a guardian of the forest or whatever. And I was like, damn fucking straight. I am. I took that little I white bitch and flipped them all around that forest. Oh my. Ugh. Oh my. Oh Man. My. Uh, my, my favorite part was, was Pam and I were, um, on the flight. So I had the aisle traveler was on the middle and then she was on the other middle. So it was like a, it was a one, two, one configuration of, of how we were flying. And so she couldn't see me. All she could see were my hands. And so she would just kind of see just this, <laughs> just like shaking in frustration. I, I yelled a lot. They of are very hard games. They are, they are, yeah, that's but here's, here's my question. So I, I literally just finished and, and I, I, I finished the game the, if you haven't finished the game, it's, it's really, really, it's a beautiful, beautiful poem. Uh, the design is, is those people, I want to meet all of them and then punch them in the dick. Just <laughs> pack. Um, you know for, that that team met in person for the first time ever at their launch party? At the awards. Oh, was that the launch party? I thought it was at the awards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they all were like disparate. 100% hey, remote were... studio uh, mm-hmm. from conception. I was cursing Studio the Multimar design. is also 100% remote. Obviously a bit different because some of them are siblings. But a Who lot is? of the rest of the studio is completely remote. And uh, Mon had a cuphead. No mm-hmm. way. See, this oh, is what do. happens. Yeah. Offices are expensive, Troy. But yeah, but put, put people together and they'll make a less challenging game. Like, I don't ever want to see like... <laughs> <laughs> like from software go we're all gonna go remote like Celeste fuck you no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> it'll be too hard <laughs> i i think i i was cursing their design because i was like this is broken like this is too challenging it's too hard but i never quit the game and that's really i i will mm-hmm. i will bail on a game if it's if it doesn't grab me if it doesn't have the if it's too challenging for me then i'll bail 
I just don't get to play it as much as I want to. And so when I play it, I don't want it to be that punishing. Mm -hmm. But I finished it all the way. And so I immediately started playing <clears throat> um, Will of the Wisps. And have you ever had a game where you love the first, and I think it's super ironic that of all people I'm bringing this up, but have you ever played a game that you loved the first <laughs> one? <laughs> and then the sequel came, and even though you could tell there was, I mean, there's all new systems that they included mm -hmm. in this. There's there's a definite elevation and an upgrade. It's not just a new map. I already have it my answer to this game. question. All right, go. Knights of the Old Republic. Uh in every in every way from a gameplay standpoint the second one is an improvement and yet i think the first one is my preferred of the two why uh, because if nothing else it told a more interesting story that felt somehow more at home with the nature of the mechanics and the you know the bioware dialogue trees and you spend so much time listening to characters and i felt that what they had to say was was it added up better even though i liked that the second one was going in the direction of you know, moral quandaries in the in the world of Star Wars, which is not as typical. You know, it was usually Star Wars was typically a little bit more good and evil, black and white. And the second one, I, mm -hmm. I'll never forget towards the beginning. The second one had this moment where there was like a there was like a street, you know, like a like a beggar on some planet. And if you gave them money, they immediately me. ran off and got killed because they had money or something like that. And it was supposed to be this, I can't remember exactly, but something along those lines where it was sort of like, you know, the downstream effects of what seems like a good action may not be a good action. And, but it didn't go as many places as I was hoping it was going to go. I'm also and not sure that that's the point where you want to try to teach that lesson. <laughs> Don't give the homeless money. I feel like maybe you could choose a different. <laughs> they can't be responsible with it. It was something. It was something. Effect. And I'm well. And the truth is, you know, take it with a grain of salt that that was exact the setup. But it was one of those things where, you know, you had this kind of shadowy figure. I can't remember her name, but she was kind of like a maybe is she a Sith? Maybe is she a Jedi? There were a lot of things that I thought this is going to be really great, and but they had definitely improved like the combat and from a design standpoint, it's and even and just visually, everything about it was a step up. And yet when I think back uh, on that franchise, the first one is the one that I just go, man, Knights of the Old Republic, one of the great RPG, you know, one of those great Bioware, one of my hands down favorite I gaming actually agree experiences. With you. Swatter coder? Yeah. Mine's uh, Fable. I love the first Fable, mm, um, including the point. anniversary, which is like the extended version of the first Fable. <laughs> I do not like yeah. Fable 2 or 3. I still finished them. Um, but in comparison, they feel like kids' games. It's not that Fable 1 wasn't. Obviously, I played it when I was a kid. Um, but it, I think the combat is a little bit more mature in a really weird way. Or maybe it's the just The first one is but, more mature? Um, yeah, the combat is, yeah. And I, I think, like, you know, after the second game came out, they had the, the Kinect game. It just felt like the audience was changing, and it was almost to me like Microsoft was like, oh, this is our, like, flagship kid game. And I have no idea if that's correct. Um, but the first one, like, definitely had mature jokes and like sexual references mm -hmm. and all that. Um, I love that game, yeah. but I don't like the second or third. That said, Troy, a lot of people agree with you on Ori one and two. I preferred the second one, huh. and I think the reason I prefer it is because it's clearly inspired by Hollow Knight. Uh, it has a lot of similar systems to Hollow Knight, which came out in between those two games, and I love that. Um, but a lot of people agree, like, that they prefer the first one over the second one, or vice versa. It's mm -hmm. it, it's something that is very true to, you know, I mean, we saw the same thing with Last of Us. It's like, Last of Us is a very simple game. It's a simple story, simple mechanics. The stuff that's happening under the hood, for those paying attention, is is pretty cool. But there were even, like, with the AI, it was an intentional choice to make sure that, like, <sighs> Ellie behaved in a specific way that wouldn't, you know, there are people who complain that was like, Ellie would get you into trouble. It's like, well, yeah, but we could either do one of two things. And Neil and, and, and Jacob Minkoff and all those guys could explain this far better than I. But it came down to a choice of like, what do we want to do here with this AI system? And do we want to do – so when we get to part two, there's, there's a whole new, you know, bucket of Lego to play with, so to speak. And so you don't just want to go, well, we told that story. Let's tell it again. You elevate everything. I get it. But there was just something, and maybe it's coming off of, if, if I'd given it some time, there's very few things that you want to go, you don't want to go watch Lord of the Rings 1, 2, and 3 back-to-back. -back. I know people have, it's like, 
get up from the couch for a second and just like breathe for a second. But there was something about it that going from being super powerful, having all of the, the abilities <clears throat> and all of them maxed out to then the reduction of that, I'm like, oh my God, like I, I had forgotten. And I played, I put <clears throat> 23 hours into that game. So there's more people that had like 10, 15 hours. I, I really, really took my time. And there was a lot of stuff that was probably more challenging than it was for most. But I think that going from such a and, and when you when you're fully maxed out on something, it's so enjoyable because you go back to all the old enemies that you used to and you're like, fuck you. You just do whatever you want. And then coming back to the most basic of jumps or the most basic of enemies, and you don't have all those things. So it's, it's interestingly, per, yeah. The Lost of Us part two does that within its own game. Define you jump the reset to, yeah. to losing your upgrades um, in a way that I actually at first was like, oh, this feels weird. I just got so used to that. But I ended up really liking it because it gives you a very good idea of it in terms of design pairing with the narrative of those characters being in different places. Um, and it also yeah, yeah. communicated. It, I remember but it does do the same thing. It communicated so much about the design intent because when – the first time I realized that the kind of upgrade tree or whatever it was, however, of Abby, as soon as I, because I kept thinking this is like a five minute vignette. And so I, I wasn't like yeah. playing as, as, you know, oh, no. seriously as, as it were, you, you know, you, you play with a certain reckless quality because you're not feeling like you're investing. And as soon as the game communicated, you know, you actually are investing it, it, all it took was a brief display of that UI and I completely completely reoriented my mm. gameplay approach immediately which i thought was such an interesting mm. like that's a that's a that's a narrative uh and and gameplay communication tool that is so unique to this medium that it all it took was the display of that and realizing oh, oh shit i just reset the whole clock but i feel you my I, I, on this just to insert an additional thought on re2 it's funny because i had I think I had, I guess, the sort of mainstream opinion then because I didn't realize this. I assumed everybody liked the second one better because it was definitely one of those where it seemed like everything about it was an improvement. And yet I still also liked the first one. But I realized it was because the second one, I would almost liken it to this is an unfair comparison because it's it's better. So don't explode. But it's kind of <laughs> like the relationship of The Matrix to its sequels where they once they realize they have something that? special. Can we talk about the new one because that is a conversation. Is no, 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 right no. Now? Shh. Mm -mm. <laughs> you haven't seen it. No, guys. Wait. I'm, Troy. Pause. I'll see. I was making a point. I'll see. I was making a point. Go ahead. Sorry. Yep. No. Insert your. I also haven't it. seen the sequel. I've been in no rush when I've seen the dog piling of of hatred for it. Uh, I but, uh, love wow. it. I love uh, it. I did see Spider-Man though, which impressed the hell out of me. But that so, great. Um, yeah. so uh, all I was gonna say is, the 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 problem that the second and third one fell into is that once they kind of became so aware of what they had, it mm -hmm. it flooded with overindulgence. Uh, <laughs> and and <laughs> you might not like the new one. You might not like the new one. Based entirely on that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I really right. have extremely low expectations. But the, but the, the, the Ori to me had that same problem. It was like mm -hmm. all the conciseness and tightness of the first one. The fact that it said so, like Troy, you described it as being like a poem, and I, yeah, I yeah. largely agree with that. I, I felt like some of the narrative bits, especially the beginning, were so ham-fisted that it, it, I couldn't not roll my eyes. But the, but the, the, the general uh, poetic nature of it. For sure. And the second one, suddenly all the like NPCs have names and backstories yeah. and all that. And That's I was like that. It's like they realized, oh, now we've got this super awesome IP. Let's go nuts with it. And I was like, yeah, but that's not really what Ori is. I would argue I am not one. It's not but my that's place. Also, that's also the thing. I think I saw this pointed out by someone one. So, so. I think all of us have had this experience at some point in our careers, but like, I remember when, when I'm, when I made Thomas was alone and it blew up in the way it did. Um, I definitely yeah, read I a lot. Yeah, I too made Thomas was alone and it blew up. Yeah, we all, no, we've all, all done us, that. 
we've all we've all had we've all had the thing that will be engraved on our gravestones no matter what we do in the time yeah. after right i definitely at the time read a lot of stuff about uh sophomore success or like one hit wonders or that kind of that whole field of like the, the difficult second album basically because i knew i was riding towards a difficult second album inevitably right like just because it was mm. going to be the way it was and one of the most interesting things i read on that which i definitely took to heart and i think made it easier when i made subsequent games you know and not every game i've made has been the the, the scale of thomas was alone um was this the the insight that uh the first thing you make that is a hit has so much more going for it than you will ever have with any of your subsequent works a because it's the thing you've probably worked on the longest either consciously or unconsciously it's all the things everything you've been like wanting to say with a piece of work everything you've been building up over your lifetime over your childhood over your working life it's kind of your big opening statement and it's had so much time and you see this with bands all the time in the case of bands it's the stuff you've been playing in bars on and off for years that you've kind of been honing your style with your bandmates you've been working all this stuff out it's all existed in this big kind of loop for so long. And also then is selected by the audience rather than you. So you make the thing. And mm. if you happen to be the thing that blows up, you didn't make that thing blow up. That thing blew up because that was the thing that blew Everyone up. Everyone else did. Yeah, exactly. And then with it's a sequel, with a sequel or a second project, a you're usually under time pressure because we got to get more out while the, while the going's good. B, you're now the selector so everything that you decide should be in the next the next game in your franchise or the next thing you produce is going to be in there and the audience don't get to decide what is and isn't a hit um mm. and then of course you've got those crushing expectations so it's, it was something that i read i remember reading that after thomas was alone and thinking that's a really good framework to understand what's about to happen to me um and it, and it, it read, really did help me there's a great corollary mm. to that for whether or not you're fans of Coldplay or not. You know, they, that is, there is a, 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 a perfect example of that specific story. So here's a band that was plugging away and they put out this album called Parachutes and one song goes bananas mm -hmm. and they went from nobody to overnight success. And they, there's there's songs on that record that were demos from other like EPs that they had put out. They just ended up throwing on and 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 exactly what you're talking about. Chris Martin had spent so long writing that record, and some of those songs came to him very quickly. He was walking through Hyde Park, and it's like mm -hmm. um, "We Live in a Beautiful World" was written through Hyde Park. There, there's some there's some cool stories to it, and then all of a sudden, now they're a big hit, and their A and R rep goes. All right, guys, time for that follow up. And Chris Martin almost quit because he's like, I, I've, I've, I've no other songs. I don't think I could ever write another song again, much less something that's going to top, yeah, anything that come up for that that first record. And he called his uh, his best friend. I think it's his best friend who was the drummer, if I remember correctly, and said, "You're not going to believe it. I just wrote the entire album overnight. It was like a sudden rush of blood to the head." <laughs> and that's where okay. that entire album and that album became far more successful than than the first one. So I, I think that there are certain examples where I I, I really want to come in and I, I hope everyone at Moon Studios understands that I am in no way disparaging the game. I'm talking about it and I'm still playing it. I'm, literally, it's right in front of me right here. I'm mm. I'm I'm struggling with it because something that I spent so long on and grew to love and wrestled with and was, and was, um, uh, I had challenges both. I was like, do I continue this game? I quit it twice. Cause I was like, I'm just not going to do this anymore. And I was even speaking to, to, to someone who worked on, uh, Will the Wisp and more like, you really need to get through. I was like, where are you at? I was like, I'm in four lone ruins. She's like, you're so close. I'm like, ah, so I came back to it. <laughs> I, didn't even, I loved it. I didn't even feel like it had any slobs. Like I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I, I, they just I like sort of like a, said about fucking with me with gravity. Different. It's like, come on, man. Just like, there's <laughs> fire and gravity and come I, on. I, I really actually I liked the mechanics that were introduced were really clever. They thought they really built me too. They I really like the built, built nicely. I just it was it, it was bloated from a narrative and kind of world building standpoint. But the gameplay was a to me, yeah, the really clever 
I remember the, the kind of blue grass that you hook into where there's these puzzles of the rotating wheels that you have to kind of slingshot off of. And I remember thinking this is and, you know, the other thing that they did so unbelievably with that is their optimization of that. Uh, where you, you it's it's the least punishing gameplay loop I think I've ever experienced where your your instant respawn you know and smooth continuation of gameplay where it's really hard but it feels like reiterating is such a continuous and fast process that you're never comparatively like comparatively to the first one yes because the no, they first both, one they both had that because I remember playing the first one relatively close to Cuphead and it couldn't have been more opposite gameplay experiences for me where mm. Cuphead is like brutally difficult and then you you die and it it pulls up the loading screen and then the music restarts from 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 the beginning again and it's it's like everything about it whereas one of you know like one of the things that I I thought they did really nicely here was that so much of the world is continuous like Garrett my of course, compulsory uh, shout out to my friend uh, Gareth Coker for the great scores. The to music both is games. beautiful. The music he, uh, is beautiful. Yeah. He, uh, you know, they make it so that music basically doesn't ever stop. You know, it's like if mm -hmm. I, unless I'm for somehow remembering it wrong, where you know you die and and there's a sense that the world is continuing, and you respawn, and it, it's not that the game is doing a hard reboot based on your death. You're just kind of reappearing, and that made it. so so palatable to die a thousand times. Right, but with Ori, with, with Blind Forest, saving your game was a mechanic. It wasn't just a feature. So I would intentionally save, I choose my save point versus now the game chooses for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, still, but sure. but I just mean the the sheer... The sheer turnaround time between the ability to try again, just that, sure. the tiny window of that, regardless of, even if I have to run to go back over to where I was and it's, you know, a little ways off screen or what, just the fact that I'm not on a loading screen is the reason that no, I think is the single, yeah, that's the reason why I never gave up on that game. I found it continuously enjoyable because the friction <laughs> was almost non-existent. And that's a huge win for a platformer. That's what gets, that's how they can get away with something that's so hard. Because it's such a yeah. joy, you just try again one second later. Like it's, it's the it's, Super Meat Boy trick, right? It works every time. Yeah, kind of immediate. yeah. As I a like funny the idea of this, this leading us down a path of um. Though I feel like I should ask two questions first. Uh, first, Troy, how have you yes. of all people not seen the Matrix yet? Dude, okay, so it's the it's the holidays, man, and I've I've barely been here. Like I went from a dead stop, no travel to. First of November to the end of the year, I flew about eighty thousand miles. So like I, Daddy got in the air. So I, I just haven't I haven't had my 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 ass on the ground, much less in the seat of a of a movie theater. So I definitely th this this week is is what I'm planning on doing. That there's you can just, catch it um, streaming by the way. I watched it on HBO Max. I, don't, I know you. I know I can. It feels <laughs> it feels wrong. It feels wrong. Um, it's like having a really hot cousin. It's like, yeah, it can. <laughs> I did watch. It is exactly the same as that. Probably shouldn't go and talk to her. Phrase. Oh my god, yeah, go that's funny. Uh, funny. Um, my second. We always get back to Rudy Julie. We always get back to Rudy Julie on you in the end. We always do. We always do. <laughs> Mike, did you have a pick for a game where you really um preferred? The, the first of the yeah. <laughs> I have a second to third. Can I do that? Is that with the rules? I feel like that is. <laughs> Isn't that everybody also, with Mass a, Effect? They, well, so it's not me. Mass Effect. It's a, it's, 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 aspect. It's, a, it's, it's a Troy joint, but it's not the Troy joint that you'd expect. Um, it's um, And it, it definitely falls under the, category, the exact same category of objectively the third is better than the second, but I did not like it as much. It's Metal Gear Solid. Like, I really... Like for me, MGS two is like the pinnacle of the series, and there's like oh. three of us who think this way. Um, we are we are very rare because three is objectively the better game. It's it's richer, it's more interesting, it's a lot of things. But something about two, I think when I tried to sit down and work it out, I think for me with two it was the constraint of the location. I really like two has that diehard feel. It feels like a very specific piece of geography that you're interacting with, that you're working with. Um, so did one. Really kind of comic booky. Oh, one's excellent as well, but two two is better than three because for me three feels a bit too wide open. 
and it, it lost. Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm. Okay, I was gonna say that yeah. Was, I, Metal Gear Solid wrong. feels super diehardy too because you were literally. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, one is excellent. From yeah, it's but but that's an uncontroversial opinion. I think most people would say one to two. I think definitely the view at the time was that two was great mechanically but a bit of a step down in terms of like story everyone hated Raiden back in the day it's worth remembering mm-hmm. that was a kind of a secret right going into it yeah um it was kind of the the first big like trailer lie um <laughs> i'd be fascinating to see how that would play out now wait i don't remember this um, what what was the trailer lie so every trailer for melga solid 2 pretended that snake was the main character of the game spoilers for melga solid 2 i suppose um <laughs> and then, and then, and then so, pulled out right a demo yeah, the, uh, there's trailers. If you go back to like the MGS2 trailers, they show Snake in all of the scenarios that you then play as uh, as him as Raiden, in. Um, and everyone hated Raiden. Um, there was some weird homophobia attached to that in the community. There was some weird kind of gung ho ness, I guess, or kind of a desire for kind of the grizzled, more uh, I, don't, I don't know, more eighties action hero kind of vibe of Snake, which is pretty gay. What's, Yes, but I think there was less nuance to the discussion than, <laughs> than that. Um, and you see yeah, that prop up, and you see like like there's I, I, is it literally like a guy called Rydonovich in three, right? Who's like the gay lover of one of the bad guys. Like there was definitely like some weird stuff buzzing around around Ryd. But I loved Ryden and, and the joy I felt when Revengeance was announced because he was always I love my favorite that game. character. I remember when that oh, came out. Oh, it's so it's so good. That's the that was that felt like vindication, like you know, ten years <laughs> on or whatever it was. Um, I remember yeah, being was, at E three and seeing that demo and then seeing the name. And it was called Revengeance. I was like, how has no one mm-hmm. thought of that name? <laughs> I know. Metal Why Game is there not Revengeance. 50 80 80s movies so called Revengeance? I think probably even because even line. the executives in the eighties were like, it's Guys, a we bit can't much. Call it yeah, <laughs> that's too far. That's too far. <laughs> We may be in the 80s um, and doing coke in our boardrooms, but we are like... Uh, Kojima's like, excuse me. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. Fuck it, I'll do it. Yeah. In the- so my leading question off of all of this was going to be, uh, I like the idea of off of Troy gushing about Blind Forest. Hmm. If everyone has a pick for what their favorite game they played this year was, but it doesn't have to be a game that came out this year. Or I can make it that it can't be. Oh, they- man. My favorite game that I played this year, I'll go, was Link's Awakening original on, on, on the OG, on, on the little Game Hell Boy yeah. right there. And I just downloaded it for my Switch, too, because I want to see how different it is. But that's because I, I started that game when I was, you know, 12. And I finally just got to finish it. Thanks again. To you only Hun- just finished it? Hungry Wait, Bar- we may have spoken about this already. I don't remember. Yeah. Eric Castro, cool. at Hungry Bartender, hooked me up with the original Game Boy. And I I plugged that fucker in and I put in the hours and I cried. Like I, I got to the very end. I was like, I've been waiting, you know, 35 years or 33 years, whatever, to to finish this game. And and it's just that's the be I know everyone's talking about the pocket coming out and it's it's all in the the hoopla and everyone's really excited about it. And I, I really um that's I think right. playing any game, especially the games that have inspired and have sired the amount of game designers that we have today. I think it's it's helpful to understand. It's the same thing as history. Understanding history, going back and reading classics and watching old movies, you know, that was like, that's stupid. I mean, you need to understand, you need to watch Coppola's movies in the 70s. You need to watch uh, Brian De Palma's movies in the 70s to understand the filmmakers that are making movies now. And it helps put that into a different lens. And I think everything helps bring about some more empathy so that I could be a little bit more compassionate towards the people trying to fuck me in or in the blind forest <laughs> is because they played games like Castlevania and Metroid and everything growing up. And now they want to do something that has those mechanics, but reframe that in a, in a more palatable and modern way. Right. There can be a flip side to that though. I, I agree. Um, and I definitely think that Ori is not but wasn't it Citizen Kane where people were like, how did you make this movie? And he was like, I just didn't know the rules. I didn't know any better. So I just made something. I think that that can he was sometimes like, I'm be gonna make, and- He's like, I'm going to make the last of us of movies. <laughs> I'm going to make the last of us of movies. And then one day, <laughs> they will come out with the last of us. value in, in not knowing the rules and making something. I feel like you come out I don't believe that's. Different. I don't believe that's true. I, I think that is uh, well, totally true. 
sometimes yeah, I, it, it's one of those things that works one percent of the time, but one percent of the time it works really well. Like he one hundred percent knew the rules. Allies. By the way, there's no one that could have understood. <laughs> like he one hundred, he had been he in, in, in most the business. Of them. Yeah, he invented most mm. of them. He he was so inscrupulous but doesn't and shrewd. Does invention require you to like not be obeying rules? Like to be able to invent no. some, something new in filmmaking, don't uh, you have to be like, fuck your established rules? I love, can I just point out for a moment how happy I am that we've utterly derailed Alana's expert approach of trying to make the- uh, To be the, fair, the, I think the, I did this. YouTube <laughs> but you, you, no, you 100% did this. You, you went for that YouTube Our Games of the Year yeah. title for the episode. I did. You tried yeah. for it, and I respect it. I'm going to call we, this episode we, Revengeance. <laughs> 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 Troy comes out of the work the with a game that came out two years ago and a sequel yeah. that came out whenever. <laughs> and then it's like, ah, fuck, that's not relevant. So Citizen How do we. Kane. Citizen Kane, that's always good. What what gets good <laughs> tracking of John Madden? Um, to be fair, I, I don't just think saw that, that our favorite games of the year is a good headline. I think it's just uh, wholesome. I like the idea of like taking time to talk about games that you like that aren't trending. Yes. You know, you know what? I'll, 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 that's I'll great that. games journalism, I'll... by the way. This is great <laughs> games journalism. <laughs> Austin, uh, you speak, mate. Well, you I was, I was I'm a games throw, journalist. I, I still, I still would put. Um, I would still put Inscription as probably my favorite release of the mm -hmm. year. I'm still working through a bunch yeah. of titles, but nothing has nothing has dethroned it. Although I still haven't finished it because I had to pause it in order to keep plowing through my list because I, I there's you know I'm on I'm on some juries where I I have to I have to log some hours on on a bunch of games. Oh god! But yeah. I think the um, Inscription. I think the um, I think the um, um, the the ironic thing is well, you got Mass Effect, Austin. I mean, that, the funny thing is that that probably did bring me the most happiness, just because I just have a bottomless oh, yeah. well of 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 happiness, re like reactivity to that to that game, and and um, and goddamn, do I just love so much? Uh, you know, I could replay them. It's almost an annual. Thing. It's it's kind of like every eighteen to twenty months or so. I I kind of just compulsively replay the Mass Effect trilogy, and so do, but doing so again this time felt special because of the Legendary Edition. But the funny thing is, for reasons I will explain on this show later in future episodes. You know, I was in London uh, uh, until just a few days ago, and due to COVID related uh, mania, I ended up sort of you know, quarantined in a hotel room for five days, hence when we recorded last time. Uh, and um, although I didn't get COVID, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll illuminate all that later. But it's such a, it's such a, like, to be stuck in a room, you know, that's a th one fifth the size of this room uh, and has, you know, windows I can't open that only just look at a brick wall and and like to just kind of be in this time warp of I don't know when is when and everybody I know is eight hours time difference away and like you just enter into this bazaar. So I, I, I had my laptop with me. I had this, you know, couple years old MacBook laptop and I thought, I wonder what I have that in my Steam library that's compatible with this computer. And as it turned out, XCOM 2 ran just fine. So I played like nice. 40 fucking hours of XCOM 2 over the last <laughs> no week. No way. And I have I'm to sorry. say, that is truly one of the best games. I fucking love that franchise in general, but it was such a cathartic way to get through the uh, the COVID uh, quarantine. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So that may How be my winner that? for 2021. How did you uh, do that, though? What do you mean? Because it's a laptop. It. I mean, it. It. It's the the build is on Steam is compatible with with Mac and the laptop is just powerful enough to run a 2017 right. game. So it's right. Uh, but I'm just I'm trying to figure out like what was your like the, literally the the input because you're not controller, you're not keyboard mouse. Oh, I mean so it's. What were you? I mean it's. The, you wouldn't really that, need it for XCOM, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. It's just well, all you need is a mouse. Left basically. and right click. Yeah. yeah I guess. Yeah. It's really yeah that that that's that's actually specifically why I chose it because I I had there were a bunch of games that showed up but anything first person is a complete non-starter without any kind of mouse yeah. or something and so I I was like this plus I've just I I mean like my Steam library over the course because I've replayed that game especially once they released War of the Chosen 
which is what I was playing, you know, of course, on the uh, Iron Man mode, which is simultaneously one of the best and worst things that you could do. It's amazing how incredibly rage inducing a bad decision can make when there's zero ability to kind of recover from it. But um, um, according to Steam, I've put 154 hours lifetime total into XCOM 2, which is probably my single highest hour count of any, you know, I mean, Mass Effect as a trilogy a probably game. beats that, but... Um, I want to see. But yeah, so that was, ironically, that may have been my gaming highlight of 2021. But uh, but my <laughs> official answer is probably some kind of weird toss-up between Mass Effect and Inscription. Inscription is allowed. It is it is so good. I, I, I'm i sure I've said it before on the show because that's why you've played it, I think. But I want to recommend everyone tries it. Even if you don't like card mm. games, do not be off-put by the fact that it looks like a card game. Because it it goes in directions that you will not expect. It's brilliant. Um, it's also pretty good, also, like card game for non card game people in many ways. Agreed. It is also a really good card. Because I'm not um, huge into deck so building games. Too. I like them, but it's not my favorite. I play them at a lower rate than the rest. But I was instantly into it. It was pretty approachable too. Yeah. I felt like they did a really good job at onboarding you into the, you it's know. So good. So, Austin, Shadow of War just on this computer. Right, so not because I originally played it on Xbox. 165 hours. <laughs> See, the funny thing is, the only game I've ever worked on that I was that I could actually, for whatever reason, the only game of mine that I've ever been able to play like a gamer, where I just somehow found myself enjoying it and not constantly distracted by my kind of wincing at all the things I wish I had done differently musically sure. was the Banner Saga. And I probably do have close to that number of hours on that fr for whatever reason. Again, maybe what it is is the turn-based strategy. But I, I, uh, I, yeah, that that's one where I probably have 100, 150 hours. It's hard to say, though, because it's a trilogy and they each one is has a different hour count. But, the uh, yeah. Damn. I put yeah, forty I don't, I don't know hours you... in on Hell's Highway. I, 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 um, I'm just going through like my the. I remember the once here on my Steam. I remember once someone telling me about a site where you log in your Steam credentials and it tells you the uh, the amount of time, like all the games you've not launched yet in your library, how many hours it will take you to play just it the would ones. Take to finish. That, <laughs> and, and then it and oh, then it, existential crisis. Yeah, but then it also Absolutely. tells you hey. other things that could be done in that same amount of time, where it's like master a new oh, language no. and or like you know. It was, <laughs> yeah, I don't even like it when your life. tells me how long I've put into games. Like I usually have that offline so that I can't see it. Solitaire conspiracy, twenty-seven hours. Nice. Oh, nice. Good choice. Car Good choice. Karatika, 8.7 hours. I played the shit out of that one. Who man. says Wait, you played Soul Set Conspiracy? Sorry, apologies. That's just that's just heavy. That's a four hour game. You played for 27 hours. 27 hours. Is that just playing like <laughs> the free play mode? Or? Um, I don't know. I've unlocked 14 out of 20 of the achievements. I think what uh, that means is that one of the times you like went to dinner and forgot it was you running. Fell asleep. That's probably yeah. it. That's, ah. probably <laughs> it. That's, That's true. Weird. I remember. Uh, I that on a Greg I, Miller's just sitting there going. I remember there was a bug on um, <laughs> on Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I remember there was a. You remember how in that game there was uh, the 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 thing where you could send ships to like. To yeah, the new I world. Love that, and that, and I have that. That game has my highest play time because of it's because of that, right? Like there was, it, yes, yeah. exactly. Same. Over four hundred here too, because it was the bug kept. It's like the game kept running in the background, yeah. uh, and and Steam thought you were still playing it, even if the computer was fucking off. Yeah. And so it I just. I think it was like four hundred and forty hours when yeah. I worked at Xbox. Yeah. They would print us all like lanyards for events that would be like just your your name and and I don't, I don't know what your job title was, but they would also put the game that you had put the most time into and hours played. <laughs> Mine was Assassin's Creed Black Flag. There were a bunch of other people. So it's like, wow, good job, Assassin's Creed. And no, it was no, 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 it's, that it's a bug. Game, which were ruled. It was super fun. It was um, super but it meant fun, that everybody had it, tons it of play time in that. Total cheat. I'm actually checking right now yeah. to see what my actual number is because I remember. I think mine was 440. I probably still have the lanyard somewhere. Four, uh, Mike, did you have an answer? 409 to the... here. <laughs> nice. It's so funny. <laughs> Um, what a great an thing to, to go the, back through my the wholesome my, game you played. The question: what's a, what's, What was the, your favorite gaming experience this year? I think I've, me, yeah, Mike Bethel. Yeah, uh, might be Hitman Three for me. I, I fucking love that franchise. That was fun. Like it's, that did come out this was year, a, but it is a great game. God, it feels like really that was it did this, come out this year? year. It came out this year. Yeah. It came out in January. I googled it. it. Came out in January. Yeah, it's um, 
Yeah, it's, I'm really uh, excited to play excellent. it in VR. I don't know if I want to play I'm him in VR. I'm trying to see if that would work. I'm I don't really know if excited about work. it. That I mean, I don't know. We'll find out. Hmm. Yeah, I, I just, I, I, that, that trilogy, I, I think as well for me, especially like Hitman definitely feels, it feels like a franchise that's being made for me and about 10,000 other people in the world. And there's a yeah. magic to that. Like it feels very niche. It doesn't feel, and I mean, that's backed up by the, the kind of the, the business history of the franchise and stuff. Like it doesn't feel like one, it, it almost feels like a game that shouldn't really be allowed to exist, but does. And I kind of love that. Like it's, there's a magic How to that. How many of them are there? Like eight, yeah, uh, and got, two yeah, movies, got... right? Yeah, it's not like it is yeah. niche, but I know what you're saying. Two I know exactly excellent, it feels very good movies. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's, in terms of the, in terms of the games, like they have, they've been, they've had mixed levels of success, like for sure, like they've definitely been smaller in that sense. But yeah, this feels this trilogy feels like it. It just it feels it feels like a return to form it also just felt like they started making games there's a definitely with a lot with especially with the um oh gosh absolution the one that came before it like definitely mm-hmm. like they were trying to broaden the audience and these this trilogy just felt like a complete is that the one with the direction. nuns <laughs> absolutely uh... i think it was yeah it was the one where it was very it was very corridor shootery they just kind of tried to pull it in which yeah. makes sense but like the this trilogy feels like yeah it's a swing in the opposite direction of just let's make the perfect version they of this are for the player who's <laughs> going I think it's yeah. so good. Yeah. The, um, I they, love they, that, some... that house. I, I'm still not over that. What is it? The second or third level of Hitman 3? The murder mystery oh, the in the house is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. man, yeah. that's good. <laughs> so good. Um, and, yeah. and But then also just kind of what's really interesting with 3, I think this is more true of 3 than the other two, is the diversity of like, Basically, the the way in which each of the levels of that game absolutely distills a different version of why that game is good. I might I'm the mm. detective level is my favorite as well. But chatting to a, a a friend of mine about that, and like his he's much more about the sandbox. So for him, Berlin is like the best, and everything else in that game sucks. Mm. And it's interesting yeah. that like there is a there's not sucks, but wasn't up to that standard. <laughs> I, it's it's fascinating that we live in a very binary world. As, Sure. Amazing, but even some sucks ass. Yeah. But what's cool is, Hitman isn't binary. Like that's what's cool about it is that even with something that specific and that it's such a specific dish or such a specific ingredient, those specific mechanics, even within that, it feel, felt like Hitman Three did a great job of kind of how far can we push that and how much range can we get out of that. And as someone who constantly has to try and work out, like, okay, how are we going to make these ten mechanics fun for five hours? Like that's. I admire that when I see game designers pulling that off so well as that game does. So yeah, really cool. I want to point out the fact... Please do. ...that... I was the one who brought up video games, and we have stayed on fucking target the does entire podcast. Does that mean that you're the problem, Troy? I think I'm the solution, guys. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if it makes you feel That's better... That's a great way of looking at it. And if you look at the if, if you look at also the comments, people were like, "Wow, look at that! Troy's been gone, and they're still wavering." I was like, "See, it wasn't just me." Between now and our next uh, episode, though, me, the like. book of Boba Fett will come out, so we can make a nice return to form to arguing about Star Wars. Not talking this time about next Star Wars, or, no, or just saying that we'll talk about it and not talk about it. Though I would also love to talk about Matrix. Um, we got yeah, yeah, yeah. Matrix. I'll what see this week. It's got the best joke ever in it, and no one I've seen online has noticed it, and it's killing me. Um, I I am you know, totally down. I'm really hot at, and I don't remember what it was. Did you guys see the new Jesus. Spider-Man? No. Yes. Yes. Troy. Yeah, I pretty good. Guys, I have been. You need to get flying? out less, Troy. You need to get out. Less. He has a child. I it's made bad. a point I of do. seeing it because and I dude, I thought. I, it's, it's a movie that benefits from trying to dodge the the spoilers, uh, and yeah. so I I was like I will see it at they the earliest that opportunity. Well. Like yeah, that's uh, yeah. I, that's but a, then that's they did a machine that yeah, they've done that very good that. out with Marvel movies. Yeah, they've done yeah. very well with I, them. I got to fly after two years. I mean, Traveler was off and running when he was born. Like he he's been to London twice. He's been to Ireland. Would you say he's, he's been, a traveler? That's, I mean, I wanted him to live up to his name. <laughs> oh, my God. Get, get closer. Nominative so, determinism is alive and well. It's got to do that now. 
it's it's been a huge <laughs> bummer that that he's not been able to you know travel at all. So I'm glad that we we it's got like to go back to Texas. A core part of his identity was stricken out of. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, were, they, were, they, were, they also they were considering renaming him to stationary. Yeah, yeah exactly. Stationary. <laughs> yeah. Traveler, uh, sedentary banker. Name. So, oh, you guys are boring the shit out of me. Um, I just yawned. That's why I said that. <laughs> I always do. That's the best thing to say. Um, I, I I will I will also tell you there's there's another great thing that I got to do this weekend. That's 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 super fun to do. Um, <clears throat> but I was glad that I got to be able to, to travel with my boy and he crushed it, had his own seat and everything. He was just kicked back, yeah. living his best life. It was awesome. Um, but there's something that I love to do and I encourage anybody that has done anything of note that were to where the public audience might be able to recognize you whenever they go, you look familiar. How do I know you? Which is just the weirdest question ever. It's like, I don't know how you would know me. I don't know anything. I always you. say that's just my face. That's a great response. Here's what I do. They're like, <laughs> are you an actor? I, like, I, I am interchangeable with like, all other blondes. So <clears throat> it's a common they, error. Exactly. It's it's a slow just pull, in, right? Because you don't want to you don't want to just pull this too fast, right? You need to you need to let the line out and let the mouth get the fish with his mouth part on it. I gotta on tell you, thing. I one time actually Spoken probably like a ones, proper have had people say that to me. Um, I remember it so distinctly one time in Sydney because I was so angry that a guy came Sydney? up to me and was like, I know you from somewhere. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I wait because I think that he does. And it was just a pickup attempt. Well, and I'll sit there and nice. be like, cool. So Ho- like, which, homie got no game you from. He's like, no, I don't. <laughs> I was I so say angry. This, they go, I they're was like, like, he fucking tricked me. I'm an actor. They're like, okay. Where you look so familiar? What what would I know you from? I was like I, I I don't know. I mean, what what would you? He's like I, I I just you I know that I know you from somewhere. And I was like yeah. I was like what do you do? I was like I'll do a lot of porn. Uh, and they're like oh no. And I was like yeah. I mean it's it's, it's really weird because I, I do like like the worst. Most of it's illegal. Um, porn. Almost exclusively. Ever yeah. and like if you you got to work really hard. What would you know me from? And they're like oh no. I want and it, it's backpedaling. It's <laughs> super Solid. fun to do. That's mean. Uh, my no, fa- my my, I, my I, agent I, was once I, on a I've flight. I've experienced the opposite. I've experienced the opposite of that, where I didn't recognize a porn star, and she was a little bit like surprised and offended by it. That's happened to me. Wow, I've that's been, also good on I've you. Been... I had a porn star that was my parachute instructor, my my skydiving instructor once. That was fun. Oh, cool. So that's a career pivot. The first time oh. I had hummus, uh, it was a porn star who was like, "You should have hummus," and I was like, "I've never had it before." And she was like, "Please try the hummus." So you know. There's a bus for everything. Just passing. So I have the no porn star stories. I feel I feel out of the. Come on, Austin. Here. You live Seriously. in Los Angeles. You must come you on. Have yeah, have some I'm just been Los Angeles. Valley. I'm in the valley. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, uh, I my agent was once on a plane and uh, was sitting next to a guy and was like, "You look like this obscure character actor, so and so. That's sort of like this has been from the '80s. How, do people ever say to that? And I can't. I wish I remember who it was, but it was someone very obscure. And the guy was like, "I am that person." <laughs> but he was literally sitting next to <laughs> this guy we thought was a doppelganger and just basically shit all over him huh. as the warm up line. Oh no! And, oh no! It's like all the Tony Hawk stuff. And I just love the premise of that moment mm-hmm. because you are then stuck next to them for the you know the although although. That is my agent Richard is such a like charming dude that I'm sure he, he outmaneuvered that awkward moment immediately and they were best friends by the time the flight landed. But representing but, yeah. him by the time they landed, right? Like and taking over. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I literally only represent composers, but I'm gonna make an exception for you. This is uh, it, yeah. Yeah. Well, I I I would like for you, Troy, to see yes. Spider Man because I'm I going to he was it's, so it's impressed. Very funny and very sweet. A few very specific things that they did in that film, also that I was so impressed by, that I I was like, man, mm. that that they they really, uh, yeah, I you know you'd think uh, I keep coming to this conclusion like the, the MCU probably should have ended with Endgame and then they just kind of like reboot into something new or something because it just felt like you know where you, you can't. It's like it's like You're ordering twenty movies dessert. in, you know. It's it's. Well, no, it was like ordering dessert after you had sex in the bathroom of the restaurant you had dinner at. Like, like, apparently, yeah, just that, that like was the that. Metaphor I was going to go for, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely Probably right. should have just that ended just that here. Thinking. But let's go ahead and have yeah. dessert, I guess. It's like, well, we already set it up. 
We already ordered it. <laughs> yeah, go. just so like that. All, your point is Austin, they kind of surpasses that. They kind of yeah, they managed to surprise. The dessert tastes really good in the restaurant. Is they they they, yeah, they, they, they managed to do things with it, and not the obvious stuff. Like uh, yes, it's fun. Mm. The the things that they did that are the obvious things that people get excited about were were great. And I had no, but you saw that coming. But it was the it was yeah. the, there was a few unexpected things that I thought, wow, they really. Again, I don't want to. I don't want to get into it until I can speak more openly about it. So yeah. I, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, but um, it's phenomenally well written. Like to an extent, I was shocked by. Like it exactly. felt so. Well it's really out. funny, really sweet. And uh, again, I just. Maybe we should also edit out the fact that I talked it's, about it's the, more fun, the it's sex more in the bathroom like of the restaurant and dessert. And then get to, yeah. <laughs> Troy, is that worse? <laughs> is that worse than the hot cousin? Though I feel like I feel like you. No, 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 no. Yeah. Keep this keep is, the hot cousin in. Today. The two wine stories wine. are related, Austin. Keep the two the, stories are related. Well, <laughs> that's what's weird. Is it was my cousin. <laughs> Granny's birthday. That's my, my, my. That's what I'm you edit out. You sorry. edit that no, out. Absolutely not. That Get is rid not of that. Anywhere now. <laughs> uh, I'm um, so glad I can trust you guys. <laughs> you? <laughs> I wanted to give a very quick shout out to Unpacking. Um, really, really wonderful very game good. that has such a unique approach to Still storytelling. I cannot not believe that a game where you put right. items in a house got so emotional. It was really cool. Um, and my most heartfelt game of the year has been Halo Infinite, which is also cheating. Uh, but it's just it's just because it, I'm playing Halo with all my friends all the time again, like I'm a teenager and it rules. That's what Halo was all it's about, been though. It's it was been very all, fun. Halo was all about bringing people together. I think it's yeah. it's a return. I didn't like the single player campaign stuff. I was like, it was fun. I played the shit out of it, but I I, I barely actually touched the single player campaign. Halo is all about multiplayer. It's all about your friends and it's awesome. Warthogging and stuff like that. I'll have exactly. to share also, the uh, Halo musical that I did with Tripod uh, with you about. Pretty fantastic! Oh, yeah. It's like an eight. It's like an eight-minute song about three seconds of gameplay in Blood Gulch. Um, nice. It's so uh, like God. They're so good. It's so funny. <laughs> um, but only story the second for best day. Australians frequently referenced on this podcast, though. So the second best Fine. Australians. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fair. That's fine. Well, they are collectively one unit what, of an what, Australian. What, what is and, the high, What is the hierarchy of Australians? Ben, well, it's me, Nicole Kidman, Randy Feltface. Where does he go? Is he like mm. number four, number five? Hugh Jackman's pretty high. Yeah, Huge that's true. You Hugh Jackman. Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Um, we'll move. get into that next week, um, rather than talking about Spider Man <laughs> naturally. But I did also want to say Happy New Year, everybody. This episode goes up on the thirty first. So I hope you all have. A wonderful mm. new year, and we be will see safe. you in 2022. Don't be stupid. Call your mother. Always. And that's all, right. all I got. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. Hell of an outro. Bye. Bye.